Hey guys, it's Mr. Yergert here to guide you through your first read of Where is Here by Joyce Carol Oates. Uh, this is a great story. Joyce Carol Oates in general is just a great writer. She does a lot of horror. Um, she's still alive. She's still writing. Uh, she also teaches uh, short fiction writing at the University of California, Berkeley. I think you can go follow her on Twitter if you want. Um, according to our background here, Where is Here is inspired by the novels of Anne Radcliffe, uh, she wrote this great story called The Mysteries of Udolpho uh, and the short stories of Edgar Allan Poe, who you're likely familiar with. Uh, she was inspired by them to write Gothic literature. She says, horror is a fact of life. As a writer, I'm fascinated by all facts, facets of life. So this is a story that is renowned for how weird it is. And we're going to point that out as we go. So follow along with me, starting with paragraph one, the big F here. For years, they had lived without incident in their house in a quiet residential neighborhood when, one November evening at dusk, the doorbell rang and the father went to answer it. And there on his doorstep stood a man he had never seen before. I love the way the story opens because apparently we have a house with a father and I'm, I'm assuming also a mother, maybe kids, but it is so general. It's kind of weird for a story to just say they had lived without incident in their house. I, this seems strange. Uh, I don't know where this is. I don't know when this is. We'll figure it out. A man he had never seen before. The stranger apologized for disturbing him at what was probably the dinner hour and explained that he'd once lived in the house. I mean, I was once a child in this house and said, uh, excuse me, and since he was in the city on business, he thought he would drop by. He had not been in the house Gosh, he had not seen the house since January 1949, when he'd been 11 years old and his widowed mother had sold it and moved away. But, he said, he thought of it often, dreamt of it often, and never more powerfully than in recent months. So we get to know a little bit about this stranger here. He hasn't been here since January 1949. And... We don't know how old he is yet, so I'm assuming 10, 15, 20 years ago, um, when he was 11 years old, his widowed mother sold it and moved it away. So that means that the boy's father had died. If you're a widow, you're a woman whose husband has died. He dreamt of it often. Would you like to come inside for a few minutes and look around? The stranger hesitated, then said firmly, I think I'll just poke around outside for a while, if you don't mind. That might be sufficient. He was in his late 40s, the father's approximate age. Okay, so now I'm thinking maybe this is like the 1970s because of the boy's age, um, now in his late 40s. He wore a dark suit, conservatively cut. He was hatless with thin, silver-tipped, neatly combed hair, a plain, sober, intelligent face with frowning eyes. So. These are some uh, some things that are teaching us about uh, the time period here. Not only is, in, is he in his late 40s, uh, but it also points out that he is hatless. Now, modern day businessmen and things like that, they, they don't wear hats very often. Uh, but back in the 1960s and the 70s, it was a lot more in fashion that you would wear a hat, something like, uh, you know, like a fedora. Uh, you've probably seen this on stuff like Mad Men. Um, but he's not wearing a hat um, with thin silver-tipped, neatly combed hair, a plain, sober, intelligent face, and frowning eyes. I get the feeling that this man is kind of sad or kind of ner nervous because he's got a, a real sober face. And that doesn't mean like not, not inebriated. It means just kind of, you know, sad and, and straight shooter and frowning eyes. The father, reserved by nature, but genial and even gregarious when taken unaware, said amiably, amiably of course we don't mind, but I'm afraid so many things have changed since 1949. So the father is reserved by nature. If you're reserved, you don't give up a lot immediately. But he is genial, meaning kind, and even gregarious when taken unaware. If you are gregarious, you are sociable and you are easy to talk to. Uh, you're kind of a life of the party sort of person. When taken unaware, and he said amiably, which means, you know, welcoming, uh, friendly, of course we don't mind but I'm afraid so many things have changed since 1949. What an interesting start to this story. I feel like I don't know anything about these people yet, even though 
She has said so much. And that's one of my favorite things about this story. We'll continue in another video.